Hi, I'm Deacon Carmine Caruso with the Archdiocese of New York, currently a seminarian at Pope St. John, the 23rd Seminary in Weston, Massachusetts, and I'm here to record this past weekend's gospel from Sunday, which was the Solemnity of Christ the King, where the church closes out its liturgical calendar year as we transition into a new calendar year with the coming of Advent. So I'm going to proclaim the gospel from Sunday, which is a very well-known parable in which comes from Matthew's gospel, chapter 25, and then give a short homily which I had done over the weekend at the parish I'm assigned to. So I hope you enjoy this talk and the proclamation of the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. I have a question to pose to all of you after hearing this gospel reading. Have you ever taken an exam before? And upon walking into that classroom to take the exam, weren't exactly sure what was going to be on that exam? I know in my own case as a seminarian and a former student who studied civil engineering, I had many encounters where on the day of the exam, I was filled with anxiety and nervousness because although I had prepared for that exam, I wasn't exactly certain I knew what was exactly going to be on the test. Well, in this gospel today from Matthew 25, this is the final exam that will be given to each and every one of us. And Christ, who we celebrate, Christ the King, he's a good instructor. Why? Because he's giving us the answers to that final exam in the gospel. He is laying out the parameters upon which we will be tested when we come for that encounter before God in all of his glory. There cannot be any ignorance on our part because, again, the Good Shepherd has outlined all the precepts, 
all the guidelines, all the instructions on in which we will be graded on, in which we will be judged. To me, that gives me comfort because there's no speculation. We know with certainty because, again, he has given us the answers. So while we're here now, we have that time to prepare and be ready so we can answer him by what we did now. Being a theologian as a seminarian, oftentimes I have the privilege of being among the company of other theologians, and we like to get into debates. And a lot of these debates basically circulate around that encounter, what, what it will be like when we come face to face with God in all his majesty, in all his glory. And oftentimes, those debates will come be reduced to a question that God will ask us. Some theologians have claimed God will ask us upon our death, who did you love? Who did you love in life? Not what did you love, but who did you love? Other theologians contend that God will ask us, did my love, which is here on this cross, did this act of love, did it make any difference to you? Did it matter to you in life, day in and day out? What difference did it make to you upon that encounter with God? I lean towards this contention that God will ask us to show him our hands and God will look out, our, out at our hands to see if there are any scars from our years of giving here in life. Then our blessed Lord will ask us to show us, to show him our feet. And he will look to see if there are any wounds from service, from the years of walking on them and doing things. Then he will lastly ask us to show us our heart, to show him our heart and, and determine if we have left a place for divine love. That's the consensus I tend to lean on, and that what we do now will matter for later. And if we left that room, that space for God to come into our hearts, we will follow those parameters and love fellow man by elevating their dignity. The great saint of the Catholic Church, some of you know, know of her, Saint Teresa Avila, she had a great saying where she claimed Christ has no body now but yours. He has no hands or feet on earth here but yours. Yours are the feet by with which he walks to do good on the earth. Yours are the hands by which he comes to give blessing to all throughout the world. Your eyes, they are the ones to see Jesus in disguise in fellow person. I have a personal story to share with all of you. Back in 2015, I had the privilege to go on a missionary trip to a third world country. And while on this trip, I worked with the brothers of the missionaries of the poor. And each day we received an assignment. Well, on this one day, I think it was a Tuesday, I received an assignment to go be at the Lord's place for the day. Now the Lord's place was kind of like a hospice center where people with HIV and AIDS were living out their last days on earth here in this center. So as you can imagine, being in Jamaica, it was quite hot and humid. And many of these centers are outside with just a basic canopy as shelter. So I was all caught up in concern of myself, knowing I would be spending the day with AIDS patients. And down there, because you sweat from the heat, I was concerned would their sweat be getting on me. I mean, this was long before the pandemic and we were covered with face masks. There wasn't any of that. There was no PPE. You went into this center, kind of like Mother Teresa went into the streets of Calcutta with just her bare hands. And my job was to just spend time in communion, time in fraternity with the people there. As you can imagine, it being a third world country, they did not have the technology which we have here today. So in that center, I was asked 
to play dominoes. Now, it's been years since I played dominoes, but being a good sport, I agreed to play dominoes and I sat down with this fella. So now here we are at a table and we're having a little chit chat. He's showing me how to play dominoes again. And before you knew it, I picked up on it. It's kind of like riding a bike. It never goes away and it comes back to you. Well, after an hour of sitting there at the table, it never dawned on me that I never bothered to ask this gentleman's name. How rude of me to just sit there, sit down, and not really show a genuine interest in who he was as a person. I basically reduced his dignity. Well, upon that hour completion, we were getting ready to go somewhere else, and he leaned out his hand and stretched it out to me and said, by the way, my name is Sammy, and you are. And I can't even describe how red my face was. I was completely embarrassed because I should have immediately asked his name and shown an interest in Sammy. Now, he forgave me, and God willing, God forgave me as well. But it taught me a great lesson. Whenever we have an encounter with one another, take an interest. Show genuine concern for that person and ask their name. You know, Mother Teresa, the great saint of recent modern times, uh, who founded the Sisters of Charity, when she passed away, she was paraded through the streets of Calcutta in a glass coffin. But in that glass coffin, she was left shoeless. And the reason why they paraded her through the streets of Calcutta was to show, like I had mentioned earlier, how gnarled her feet had become from years of service, how deformed and wounded her feet were, and that everybody could see this was a saint, completely extinguishing all of themselves here on earth in order to go to God. And so that's how we are to train ourselves to be more godlike. There's an expression that goes, imitation is the most complimentary form of flattery to imitate one another. And that is why we were all created to come to imitate the very nature of God in his image and likeness, to be more godlike. And if we follow the instructions, the guidelines, the parameters that were clearly outlined in today's gospel, Matthew 25, then we will be transformed to be more godlike. And we can do that by practicing mercy. Practicing the corporal works of mercy by f feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, taking care of stranger, giving them hospitality, which many people have lost the notion of that word in today's age. It's to basically say, you are more important than myself. And as we practice the corporal works of mercy, God will become more merciful to us. You know, the word mercy comes from the Latin misericordiae, misericordiae. If you basically take the word and break it down to two parts, miseriae is the one who is, the one who is in misery, who needs food, who needs shelter, who needs to be visited, who needs relief because they're suffering. Cordier, on the other hand, gives us our words of today for cardiology, which is the heart. And basically, when you break down those two words for misery, cordier, you get the one who is in misery being placed into one's heart. You're taking that one who is suffering and bringing them into your heart. That is the true essence of the word mercy, to take the one who's in misery, and bring them into your heart. And when we do that, we will become more godlike. And then upon that day, when we go to take our final exam, God will measure us for the amount of mercy we gave to others. And may that mercy be given back to us. May you all have a blessed week as we prepare for the coming of Advent. And may God be with you all. Amen.